Bianca Bose. Yeah. What's up? That's right. Yeah. Bianca's here. Hello, Alana. Uh, how are you doing? How was it recording with uh, with Daniel Henny and your two super attractive women? Yeah. <laughs> Overwhelming. Yeah. I, I believe you. <laughs> Maybe I, that'll just be the intro. For I, sure. I love the thruple. I, oh, I love so them. Good. They're so good. I love them. Who Dude, could the not love them? Losers and none weirdos. of them. Yes. Um, no. Uh, hey, hey. <laughs> they're bonded they don't have a choice <laughs> i even oh love God, you know, can you imagine can now i'm just imagining like a situation where an aes Sedai just knows that two warders can't stand each other but just bonds them anyway i will be like, like bonding I'll dynamic it. is so fucked up no it's it is like it is so fucked up but that's like that's but like also you enemies, would read it yeah. that's an, right i would read enemies to bonded like yes right? <laughs> I would Friend absolutely that, that fic story. already exists. I have no doubt in my mind that that I'm fic already, already I'm not ready to go to AO3. Where are we at? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just the story of Naruto and Sasuke, but hopefully super <laughs> no! condensed. No! It's just the story of Gawain Look, and Look, if Gawain, we're going to bring Naruto like... into this, it's like a whole new ballgame. Um, oh, I try to as much as I can. I mean, it brings Naruto into every recording that we Less. do. And then I got to work. I got Jiraiya back there. Previous moment has arrived. <laughs> yes, we're, I'm in this Venn diagram. Excellent. I love it. Perfect. Perfect. Well, this is gonna be you a good didn't show. come here to listen to us talk about Naruto specifically, though I'm sure it will come up again later on in this recording. You came here to listen to the Black Tower podcast, a Wheel of Time podcast. I am one of your hosts, your Amon Khan Mahale, Daniel, and I am joined by my two good friends. Another of your illustrious hosts. Oh, my him name is us. Josh. Oh. <laughs> I am your Soravan Mahale, and tonight I am joined by Dub Sludge. So okay, this. <laughs> shit should get weird. <laughs> Though he is that's, usually that's joined my stage by name. Alcohol, We're not supposed to talk about very that here. Well <laughs> that's weirder. your stage name. <laughs> Again, that is only Taint's content. We're giving it out for free, and we shouldn't. All right. Sorry. 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 Uh, I What's am Andrew. Your actual name, Mr. Dub Sludge. <laughs> I am Andrew Irvajan Mahale. Um, and apparently, like, I'm a good friend of Daniel's. It's good to know. Damn straight. Surprise. <laughs> after, after what, two years? Two? Yeah, two years ish. More than three. Like two and a half. We celebrated our third birthday. In after more October. than one. <laughs> After more than one, but less than 20 years on the podcast together, I finally realized we're friends. <laughs> Damn straight. But as oh. I said, you are here to listen to another new, lovely, awesome, probably tainted episode of the Black Tower podcast. Uh, working we on it. are... <laughs> We are so glad that you joined us here. Uh, if you have never listened to the podcast before, as stated, it is a Wheel of Time podcast. We talk about all things Wheel of Time, whether it is the books themselves, as in how they were written, or the authors, or the intention, the characters inside, the themes that are explored. Nothing is off limits. Nothing is off limits in the books. We absolutely love the books. And as you might know, a television series has now started and the first season has ended. So we also talk about that now as well. I will admit we are definitely still more book focused than we are television show focused. However, we are aware of and have all seen the television show. So it comes up. But uh, if you want to know a little bit more about the Black Tower podcast, uh, if you want to see a playlist of episodes, if you want to get to know us on a personal social media level, if you want to give us feedback through our uh, email, all of that different stuff, you can find every single thing, maybe not every single thing, but the vast majority of things Most. that you want to know on blacktowerpod.com. Com. It's a it's basically your one stop shop for everything that is Josh, Daniel, and Andrew as far as the podcast is concerned. So pop over there, check it out. It's definitely a good time. After you're done with that, Josh, where should uh, they go once they're done with Black Tower Pod? 
Well, Daniel, funny you should ask. There are two <laughs> places they should go. <laughs> the first one, obviously, is the Crystal Barista. Now, you can look and see one of our fine Watt Chibis who looks to be an attractive young lady in an Indiana Jones hat with a rock pick. That is the Crystal Barista. She's amazing. She sells rocks and crystals and all kinds of good stuff with shininess and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, she's in Ohio right this second, loading up an entire rock shop that she just bought. So if you go to her website and go to her Facebook, there's going to be lots of ridiculously awesome sales coming your way. So and fun fact, out. who she is has she the to patience you? Patience of a saint because, because she deals with this guy all day every day on you, you the just rack. you just pointed at me <laughs> yeah oh. on, on my screen you pointed at me andrew is there something you need to tell me buddy i thought <laughs> i i thought i'd be my wife <laughs> <laughs> all right uh you should just go this way it's my okay so it's it's actually my josh wife. is josh my wife and yes. uh she's awesome and when you're done buying all of her crystals and rocks and minerals and goodnesses and subscribing to her one. subscription boxes she has number one rock count in all of utah it is true <laughs> step back over to the wheel of time go to the great uh go over there because our good friend nay bliss is super awesome and he's been building this website and it is a comprehensive look at the Wheel of Time universe as it stands today. Mm -hmm. We have a list of all kinds of content creators that are available there. There are articles on characters and places and people and things that are spoiler friendly. So you are able to control the amount of information that you're given up to the certain book that you're at. Very, very good resource. Um, and it is a work in progress. So go over there, check it out, sign up for their their uh, site there and uh, and and have fun with that. And, and then if, come back to the Black Tar podcast and leave comments on all of our things telling us how uh, you know miserable you are because of us. Yeah. And, and Andrew, if you're a content creator for place? well, one last caveat on the piggyback on the great blight discussion. Well, I just saw I just saw Josh's <laughs> face die. Um, oh, PowerPoints and speeches. Anyway, uh, if you're a content creator and you are not yet listed on The Great Blight, make sure you go to The Great Blight and you can submit some feedback to get in communication with Nablus and team to potentially get yourself added to thegreatblight.com. So Please do. if you haven't done that, definitely do that. But once you're done either finding more content creators and or trying to get yourself added to the list of content creators on the great flight. Well, now you need some swag to show off in your videos or talk about in your podcast, or maybe inspire you to do some art. Make sure you head over to newcreationsbygen.com and you can find all kinds of will, entire, will of time inspired merch. You can find uh, all of the frosty wheel mugs from the frosty, uh, frosty wheel mugs. Yep. Yeah. That works. The frosty job, mugs from the Wheel of Good Time job. Society. <laughs> yeah. All of the frosty mugs from uh, the Wheel of Time content creators that are a part of the collection. So go and check that out. And you can also find Rob's fantastic um, souvenir series from the Wheel of Time that is Rob from Weekly World News and a ton of other stuff from, uh, we're going to say at least half of your favorite content creators because not everybody's on there. We're going to leave some wiggle room. So... All of that being said, what feels like 30 minutes of plugs and promos <laughs> out of the way, um, we are not alone, gentlemen. There are visitors Wait, there to are the Black Tower. Oh, shoot. Yeah. We have visitors. So. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our fantastic and esteemed guests, if you would please. Say hi to everyone, introduce yourselves, tell everybody what you do and where they can find you and all that fun stuff. Yeah, wow. you. Oh, it's me. Okay. <laughs> it was going to be so smooth and then I got confused. Hello, I'm Jen and I'm from Tarvalin or Bust and I'm here with my co-host Preeti. Hi, also hi. from Tarvalin or Bust. <laughs> 
And yeah, we're super excited to be here. We They have very generously agreed to limit the discussion to the books that we are up to because we are rereading all of the Wheel of Time books. We started in advance of the show, and now the show is out. So we've seen the show, but we're still rereading. We're up to the Shadow Rising. We finished the Shadow Rising. We're on New Spring now. And we're, yeah, super excited to be part of this whole Wheel of Time community. Before we go any further, I just want to throw out there, that means that you're actually somewhat further into the book series than Andrew. Gasp! <laughs> what? You're not actually. He just hasn't read New, <laughs> New Spring yet. New Spring He's is read all myth. 14 of the main books. He just hasn't read New Spring. <laughs> New, well, listen. And we give him shit for it all the time. And New he, Spring is a myth. It's, a, it's, a, cons- it's it. a conspiracy it is. No, it is, though. Like, it is. It is a conspiracy. I'm reading it, it and I think it's a conspiracy theory. Like, right? 100%. <laughs> no, As proof, you can see there's only one crease in my New Spring book, and that's just me <laughs> opening it to make sure there were words on the page. <laughs> that I didn't get sent a blank book, but that's it. We, yes. we almost weren't going to read it, to be yeah. perfectly honest, because both of us refused to read it when it came out because we were so no, mad. No, I read it. Oh, you did read but it. But I sat. <laughs> no, no, no. I read it, but I sat in a Barnes and Noble and I read it. I didn't buy it. You I just sat in the bookstore it. and I read it. Nice. Because we, we wanted a sequel, not a prequel. Yeah, and I was very bookworm, angry. Right. passive aggressive at its <laughs> yeah. fine. I know, right? All right, Barnes and Noble. I will come to your store. I will buy a coffee <laughs> from Starbucks. <laughs> I will read your books, and then I will go home. And then I'll leave. Yes. <laughs> and then I will go home. <laughs> Dude, those were some of the best days was just going to Barnes and Noble right? or Borders when that was a thing. Uh, and that just was sitting there R.I.P. Books. Yeah, or that R. was R. my R. first Borders. bookstore job. I worked at a Borders back oh, in the yeah? day. Mm-hmm. So Amazon Amazon killed your first job? Yeah, my first bookstore job Amazon was Hastings. Hastings. The oh, Hastings. Store. Old school. Aww. Amazon killed the book. No, they're store. still out there, yo. They're still there. They're still Borders? there. No, no, bookstores. Bookstores, bookstores are, bookstores still, are there. still there. Well, yeah, bookstores yeah, yeah. are still there. Just Borders was killed but by yes, Amazon. Borders they took was them killed out back Amazon. and yeah. executed them. Yeah, that was that weird, <laughs> that weird like what low country shit. redneck brand of nerd and, and Barnes and Noble. <laughs> like I'd come in and I'd like read the hunting magazines, <laughs> and then I'd turn around and I'd start reading the manga. <laughs> like, <laughs> awesome though. Like, Whenever you put a hunting magazine I back and it. then you come back to the same seat with a manga, the looks you get are sometimes hilarious. No, it's you know the read, booksellers uh, were like, a, I love that kid. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a very important cross I read Dead Man Wonderland that way. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you haven't but watched Dead Man Wonderland, further, you, you need to go and watch it. It's fantastic. I will and then read it. Mind. And then read it, of course. Uh, but before we go any further, you are from Tarvalon or Bust. Yes. Where, if these lovely people who are listening to us would like right. to come and listen to you, <laughs> yeah. can they find Tarvalon or Bust? Where is the best place to reach you? Uh, uh, basically on every podcast platform, I think. Yeah. I, I think. <laughs> yes. so just stop we, before we the said, platform. We said like, <laughs> just yeah, on just every podcast. Put us, put us everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're on every podcast. <laughs> yeah. Somebody is talking about, no. Every platform, I think you can find us. We don't have like a, we're, this is a labor of love and we're it both is. very busy. And so we like <laughs> don't have a website. No, that's not true. <laughs> we, we have, have an Patreon. Yeah, well, we have hey, a Patreon. There we, uh, go. Yeah, we have yeah, Acast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have a Patreon and an Acast, but <laughs> mostly it's like under the hashtag on Twitter, Tarvel and our bus. <laughs> all right. All right. But yeah, Fair you can enough. go, you can go to patreon.com slash Tarvel and bust and check us out there if you are so inclined. And yeah, we like both of us work in books. So we have a lot of book feelings, obviously, yes. perhaps, obviously we do cl- a lot of close reading, uh, <laughs> intensely, <laughs> intensely close reading, which is like, why we're only on book four after having started this a year in- ago. Intensely close reading. Is that where you read it really intensely or it's just very close to your face? <laughs> it's like... a little bit of both because yeah. the eyesight is going. Yeah. So, right, and the type is very small, so small, Sometimes, so small, yeah. but then it's also, Wait, you like, don't have the. You don't have the 48 font uh, books? I got the big ones for the second the second half of the series because they didn't okay. have our favorite mass markets. <laughs> just the, the loyal and thigh highs. That was not, oh, that was not oh, an boy. option for the second half. Darn it. 
Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for being on. We are happy to have you here. Uh, we are happy that you agreed to this man. I mean, this podcast. <laughs> um, and Andrew, let's go ahead and give the people uh, the spoiler warning. We already sort of mentioned it, but do you want to tell people where we're stopping? Tell people what they can expect if they don't leave now? Uh, yeah. So if you have not read up to the start and by like, that's the next book you're picking up, either New Spring or Fires of Heaven, depending on your preferred reading order, <laughs> then you you probably should stop here. I mean... I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. You know, if you want to come into the danger zone of spoilers, by all means, uh, do what you want. But if you have read, if you have read up through the shadow rising, uh, you will be 99.99% safe. Yep. Because, you know, I have to leave it at 99% because only Sith's still in absolutes. (laughs) And I'm still trying to be undercover about that. Is that, is that, is that not an absolute? (laughs) <laughs> that is an absolute it right is. <laughs> it is. Shit. in the, Je- in the jedi that. deal religiously in hypocrisy so yes. right <laughs> perfect excellent but that one was, that josh, one was for josh how very Hopefully jedi of you to give it. yourself a little bit of wiggle room yeah there we go hey uh hey okay. josh what yeah. are we talking about today dude you ask me like i pay attention oh my god I really, i'm pulling it up right <laughs> hold on we, i we totally knew- don't have like the whole but schedule with all the topics and everything. This is what we have to deal with, guys. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm looking at it. <laughs> Jen, Preeti, do you it's see show... what is going on right now? <laughs> today, okay, so today we're talking, we're we're doing a special compare and contrast because we never do that. Um, we will come to you, Utah, and slap you right now. Please do. <laughs> I, you can slap me and then I will fill you with beer and we will have fun. I, you're um, not wrong. Anyway, why are what are we talking about? <laughs> today we're comparing and contrasting characters. Not characters with other characters, characters with themselves. Characters compared to themselves across the multiverse of books and television. Do you like Nynaeve in the show or the books? I don't or know. Or both. Or Let's neither. talk about it. <laughs> do you like <laughs> Lan or do you like Lawn? Let's talk oh. about it. Um, they called him <laughs> Lan in the show. He's just <laughs> Lan. They lied to us so They hard. did lie to us. They did They're like, it's Lon. <laughs> yeah. It's like Lonnie. What? Yeah. Well, you know what I think they did? I think they Lonnie, said that. And then everybody I went, you, who the hell is Lon? And I think they went back <laughs> and they were like, okay, put that in the reshoots. Let's, <laughs> right. Let's dial that back. <laughs> It'd be hilarious if like I'm, you could I'm hear the distinct like Rigo. audio cut. Where like Daniel Henney had to go into the recording booth and like re-record his own name to stop saying long. <laughs> okay, so so let's do this. Since we have our illustrious guests here, um, give me just like off the top of your head. I'm curious to know what you guys think. What is the character that had the biggest change? Like, who is the most different from TV to book. Or book I made a chart. I was like, yes! <laughs> Jen has a notebook. Did you make a tier list? Because I, I love this. Made, I, made a, I made two charts. One was a spectrum where how like from same to different, how different or same did I think they were on the show versus the books? And then my second chart was my personal preference where they fell in the like and didn't like I, see, I knew that. That's why um, I started hey, off. Listen, with the, this is why you first, come to Carvel in our bus. <laughs> the first we have charts. Chart. Did the first chart acquire Time Warner Cable, or is it a different <laughs> spectrum? So, so listen. I got horrible laughter. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> on my on my uh like who was the most different spectrum chart Logan and Tom are kind of come are kind of okay. even in my uh estimation now this is like fuzzy math I'm not saying this is absolute this is fuzzy my math. personal opinion but I I feel like Tom was 
let's be real, very different. I mean, super different. So many ways. Like, speaking of, like, I've been referring to him as the Nickelback Tom. She's so upset, and I disagree. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad. I'm not saying... It's Andrew, the look. I'm gonna need you it's to the go look. into the security and kick a member of this club. Because Woo! that hurt my soul. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Listen, Nickelback. I love the that. look and the song. Like, that's okay. what he sounds like, the guy from no, Nickelback. He does. Agree. He does. Okay, so Preeti, you disagree. Look at this. No, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't Every disagree. Every time I do it makes me laugh. <laughs> I'm saying. That's what he sounded like. Okay. I don't disagree that Tom was probably the most different. The uh, my my argument <laughs> is that we actually don't get enough of him, and I think his characterization will change. Yeah, is my I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I actually think if we're talking about character shifts, Lan's openness is mm. the one that struck me the most. Mm. That's I, I think that's a good point too. You could because you can make the case that even with Logan's expanded role i'm doing a lot of this mm -hmm. and it's okay it's great but it's awesome. um you're channeling while you're i am i am your... i'm channeling it's my channeling motions <laughs> you do know that that's not necessary to channel right <laughs> lies but Clearly the weaves, don't, the weaves the don't, don't work if you do it <laughs> don't right. do though but they will though um, but they do I, though <laughs> but they do I, you, you can make the case that tom and logan are because this is kind of how I feel about it. I feel like they're they're the energy or the essence of the characters were That's very well captured. I agree. Yes. I agree. It's just they're like really obvious changes. Yeah. yeah. The mm -hmm. the other part of Logan is that I just don't know because of where we are on the where we are in the books. Like I remember yeah, yeah. this is a reread for us, but it's been a really long time. Yeah, we don't so, know. Like I can't remember is. specifically because he's not really in you see him <laughs> just for a second <laughs> at the end of uh, spoilers. Yeah, so, I I think, seriously. so you <laughs> don't want us to tell you that Logan actually <laughs> Yeah, is Batman. I remember. It's actually something. Bruce Wayne who is actually Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Logan Ablar is actually just an anagram for I am Batman. Was Ben Affleck in this show? No, no, no. no it's Robert Pattinson. It's actually it's the new oh, one. No. He has, oh, it hasn't no. actually even come out yet. You couldn't oh, tell. No. He was like sparkling the whole time in Gal uh, in Gelden. Oh, throwback. <laughs> I do. I agree oh. though. That lands openness, no doubt. And I had Moiraine pretty different also yes. because of how, like, she is so much more open? Is aggressive, the right word. I mean, definitely open. Like, she says shit to people that in, like, the first five minutes of that show. You're like, who are that you? She, <laughs> that she does not say in five books worth in the books. But also... <laughs> She like her her motivations are the same, so I yeah. think it's interesting that I on on the whole, with some obvious exceptions, I'm on board with a lot of the changes that they made. But they they are big changes. Mm -hmm. Well, and I do want to say uh, again, I I know that everybody watching probably knows this already, but I am going to say it out loud, both for myself and for our guests and posterity in general. Um, all of the things that we're talking about is just perceived changes with the way the characterization is it's not about who the character is inside necessarily it isn't necessarily oh the show didn't capture this mm -hmm. character well at all or anything like that it's just about in the book they are x mm -hmm. and in the show they are x mm -hmm. or they are y and sometimes that is deep down the same thing Sometimes that is deep down, not the same thing. And sometimes that is on the surface, the same thing. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I did want to just throw out that, that out there. Because again, I agree with your takes as far as I truly believe that Rafe and Sarah and a lot of the writers actually did understand. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. These characters. Absolutely. But they didn't write them the same way. No. And that can't. can be okay. Sometimes it's not, but sometimes it is. <laughs> Most of the time it actually is, as long as you actually get the core of the character, even yes. if they come off very differently in the show as they did in the writing of the book. So mm. I, again, I just wanted to throw that out there because well, I there, agree. <laughs> there has to be a shift, right? We talked yeah. about this oh, yeah. on, on Tarvel yeah. oh, yeah. where it's like, 
just by, I keep calling it, it's like hitchhikers. It's like, you've got yes. the books for hitchhikers guide. You've got the movie, you've got the TV right. show, you've got the radio. They're all, there's a line. There's like a through line. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I just got this today. Hell yeah. Nice. What? Nice. <laughs> Yeah. Preachy's inside your apartment right now. <laughs> I, I saw it happen earlier today and I was like, I gotta, I gotta bring it up somehow. <laughs> but you know, they they had it's it's a shift in storytelling, serialized mm -hmm. storytelling yes. that they're doing is drastically different. And we're also in a different time. Indeed. Yes. Yep. Andrew, what yeah. about you? I mean, What's the character you thought got the biggest <laughs> treatment? Well, I mean, uh, the easy answer is to go from you can speak whistle characters <laughs> from characters that were or weren't X in the books and characters that got X'd on the show. Or may, maybe more aptly, axed in the show. Hate you. <laughs> You're the best, ah, but I hate you. Ah, 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 hey, the actor, the actor made the axe puns first. Oh, oh they absolutely did. did. So, did. Dude, it was like yeah, when did. uh fucking um Oberin uh made all of the headache jokes after he got his head ah. caved in by the mountain in Game of Thrones. <laughs> that was amazing. I loved those tweets. Yeah. Um <laughs> so, I mean, well, uh, I, I say that. I just, honestly, I wanted to make the joke. That's nowhere near an answer because it's not a character that exists in the book. So they can really be different from a character in the book. So it's the most um, different character. I think you hit the nail right on that. I mean, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I mean, I definitely agree with, with Tom and Loghain being very different. Uh, I mean, you could do some theorizing between the lines that maybe Loghain actually isn't all that different than how he was meant to be in the books. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's a question for, you know, like Robert Jordan and Harriet and Brandon Indeed. and the Maria. notes that we can't really see and Maria and all those. Um, but we definitely see things that are very different. One thing that, that kind of stood out to me was how truly vulnerable Moraine is in the show versus yes. how invincible she seems in the books. Like mm -hmm. Moraine in, in book one seems invincible until they're nearing Shatter Logoth. And then it's kind of given the explanation, like, well, you know, stereotypically, female Chandlers aren't that very aren't that strong in flows of earth and fire. And so she used I'm Earth a badass bitch, and it took a lot you. out of it. <laughs> yeah. And then she's you know just now starting to feel weak and everything, but in the show. You know, first episode, she catches she catches a Thakandar sword slash dagger yeah. <laughs> to the chest. And then she just like, just like yeah. whips it right back at him. It was great. Yeah, but we see her like immediately after, like her kind of counterstroke, just like fall out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, I, I, I kind of like it because it brings the Aes Sedai closer to a realm of believability and a, yes. a realm of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. It keeps them exceptional while all he's also still keeping them completely human and vulnerable so mm. i do like it i, well, I like that course, you brought one that of the up things, one of the things that i love about that storyline and i promise josh i will let you talk in a moment is is the fact that um the in the books if we're being completely on or if i'm being completely honest because i don't know if everybody agrees with me if i'm being completely honest the warders are awesome there are a handful of times where they show how awesome they are. But when it comes right down to it, for most of the story, the Aes Sedai are super capable of mm. taking care of themselves. And there is no need to yeah. have warders for them for, if I'm being honest, most of the interactions. There are a few. But in the show, I think that it did a really good job of early on in the episodes really showing just how intimate that relationship is and just how much you're missing out on in some ways if you don't have a warder and if you ignore sort of the, the capabilities of the warders and what they can bring to the table. And that's actually one of the things that I really appreciated about kind of like cutting Moraine off at the knees at Shadar Lagoth that she actually does get hurt in Emmons Field. And again, let me be super, super clear. She is a badass. She is a badass through the entire season. There is never a point where she is not a badass, but there is like a nice show of, but I really do need Lamb. Mm. And yeah. she matches the, the human as badass. Yeah. She matches the, the human wizard or the human sorcerer 
uh, from like D&D. Like, Amidst cosmic powers, itty bitty hit <laughs> die. <laughs> I, I, I like where you guys are going with this because it actually helps. Does that make Lana rogue? <laughs> no, it makes no. Lana barbarian. Come on. No. <laughs> no. He tanks the shit out paladin? of stuff. Come on. No, paladin? Maybe? Mm. Uh, Paladins wear a lot of stuff. There's an argument for a paladin. There's an argument for a paladin. For a paladin. Uh, I just um I I think I, I like that we've gone here because I it brings up kind of the next sort of comparison that I had in my brain, which is did we get everybody? Did we get everybody? Did everybody get to I don't think Josh and I actually answered the question technically, <laughs> but oh Daniel, go answer. Um t- okay, fun fact. I actually think that Egwene is the most different from Ooh. book to show. And that's only because I like to Gwen almost immediately. And that does not happen <laughs> in the books because I think she is nearly insufferable when she leaves Emmons Field because of the reasons she chooses to leave and whatnot. She's this child <laughs> who, right? She's this child. No, who just we disagree. <laughs> And that's okay. I still like <laughs> you. But, uh, but in the in the show, I mean, like, obviously there's a huge change that she is included in the could be the dragon, is Tavir, and all of that different yes. stuff. And so Moraine is like, no, you also have to leave. I'm sorry. Come with us or you might kill everybody you love. Um, but at the same time, I think that also just gives her more um, more reason to leave more more uh i don't remember what motivation more motivation from the get-go and that's actually really nice because i hate her motivation when she leaves oh my god i'm laughing so hard no 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 No, i'm laughing so hard because i have like the exact opposite reaction really oh my god i I love in the book so much and i was so frustrated by the early point, I like, I love Egwene in the show. I loved her from the beginning, but I was frustrated. They took that moment of agency and choice away from her because I love that she's the only one in that books who is like, it is my choice to leave and I'm going to do it because I choose it. Yes and no, because I, I will throw, again, I'm not saying you're wrong. You're not, you're totally valid. You're totally <laughs> but I will also say it is all still their agency to leave, even though they have more of a motivation to do so. Oh, it's just that Edwin isn't included in that in the books and it just makes her, because she is like, no, but seriously, I want to go with you. But all of them could have said no. So I don't think it necessarily takes away her I mean, agents. I, I think the I, difference I, comes yeah. in like had Egwene in the book said no, then as far as then we know, we from wouldn't the books, have gotten Egwene then, in the books. Then the tro- no, okay. no, then the Trollocs would have continued on. They weren't looking for Egwene in the exactly. books. Exactly. Right. In the show, right. it's portrayed the opposite because even though I think we all probably feel and it probably is uh, Egwene as the fourth Tavirin, uh, at least the fourth Tavirin rumored to be a Roma Monsfield, it's. It could have also been naive because all Maureen says mm-hmm. is there's rumors of four Tavirin in a Monsfield. It could still be three, and the rumors could just be wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, I doubt it, but we'll see. Unreliable but, narrator. What? Yeah, but she is still told, like, no, they're after all five of you. Mm-hmm. And if you don't all come, they will stay, they will come into the village and kill everybody. So mm-hmm. well, and this is you can get into the semantics of having the actual realistic choice if you can say yes or no which definitely is a thing in the show and the books. However, the ability to say no without negative consequences or to mm-hmm. stay without yes. negative consequences right. only mm-hmm. exists in the book. That's right. Yes. Okay, I will throw out there that I am, I'm just going to say this and we don't necessarily need to go into it. If you want to, that's fine. But if not, that's also fine. Um, I just want to throw out there in the show, I think that if she hadn't left, it would have been equally as fine because the, no. the Trollocs no. absolutely... No would have followed the three Tavirin that left with Moraine <laughs> rather than going after the one that was still in the in the village. I think they would have it's just yeah, that they exactly. all they just would have been left. like this. Because they're all important in the show. Right. I, I mean see, the dark friends say over and over all of you the majority 
that's the smart move. You don't split your forces and stay after going after one. I think it's, you, you can go after you can split three. your forces when you're an overwhelmingly yeah, exactly. superior force yeah. running down. This is crazy. Farmers. We have dissenting opinions on the podcast. <laughs> that almost oh never God. happens. <laughs> So, okay, so, okay, I, I, I hear what you're saying, Daniel, sure. and, and I think everybody is is awesome for being here right now. Oh, absolutely. Um, everybody except Oh, Daniel. way, way <laughs> to play <laughs> Switzerland. Good job, Josh. Um, no, I'm going to get you a Swiss question. flag to hang up behind Hope, your, like, shirt. <laughs> it's okay, I just need a French flag, which is all, like, <laughs> go ahead and fly behind oh. me. <laughs> oh, hey, that was not a shot against Switzerland. I love you guys. <laughs> we, we love France too. Like those guys are awesome. I mean, anyway, we, okay, no, we absolutely yes. do. They give us awesome we potatoes. Absolutely do. Um, so that, that I was just kind of thinking about, like as we were discussing this, and it was something that you said, Andrew, um, when you were talking about the difference between Moraine in the books and Moraine in the show, and it kind of, kind of pinged a light bulb in my head to say that you know the big difference narratively in book one is that it is largely from the perspective of yep. the, the camera it is <laughs> <laughs> it is largely from the perspective of kids who know nothing about the world mm -hmm. correct now in order to make the show the show had a very fine line to walk because they had to keep that perspective um, to keep the 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 energy or the feel of the story but at the same time they have to like you know a tv show with that many characters you have to show more than one perspective and so i really like that we got some moraine pov mm -hmm. early on in the tv show to give us a more full character yes. so what character do you think was edified and i know probably a lot of us are going to say moraine but what character do you think is i don't i don't necessarily want to say better but i want to say more in the tv series because we get that extra perspective um versus in the books where we're just kind of like yeah you're a mysterious figure like who, who do you guys think and you guys can can start off with that one yeah, the one that jumps out to me is Suan, because mm -hmm. in the books, you know, she's the Admiral in seat, like she's this incredibly commanding person. And I mean, you start to get more and more into what she's doing with Moiraine as the books go along, but she's not, I mean, she shows no weakness, even when she's like up against the wall, like naked in a cell, like getting all of her powers taken away from her. Like she is still so strong. Wait, when does that happen? <laughs> yeah, we, we, it's four it's four it's four it's four no i i'm aware so, uh i forgot i actually forgot the other day when we were recording i was like there's a thing that happens i was like being so coy everything was like we got to that part already <laughs> um awesome. but so hey, it wasn't me this time <laughs> it wasn't but anyone like, josh but, it wasn't but, anyone but getting baby Suan was amazing. I thought was amazing. And then the Moiraine Suan relationship obviously was an incredible change. That I think is totally supported in the text yes. of New Spring. Yes. Um, but yeah. We talked like, about that last episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 100% agreed. Yeah. 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 No, I, I agree. I think Suan, I think specifically, like you said, the relationship between Moiraine and Suan, because that episode I think is a highlight from the entire season and the sequence between them in the oath room just before Moiraine's <sighs> banishment is like one of my favorite things that happened <sighs> the entire season <sighs> because you get the two scenes juxtaposed where it's like the two of them on their own in that in the shack and then the two of them in public in the room are the writing is so good and i'm not crying so... you're crying <laughs> right. so. it's like it's so much more than jordan gave us mm-hmm and in the best, and I freaking love the books, but like in the best possible way for for those two characters. Yeah, it it's true. I I love that, and you know, Swan, God, what a beautiful gift to us as 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 book readers, because Swan is awesome. Um, lover or hater, you you can't not recognize 
just her presence, right? Um, but in the TV show, when they give us that, love and... it, believe it, you better gang way, you better hit the bulls and the kid don't play. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. You know, what about you? What 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 more did we get in the TV show that you just loved? Okay, so my answer to this is actually a uh, is going to be naive. Um, I actually think that the bastard. In, <laughs> yes, excellent. I love when I take Andrews. <laughs> um, no, I in, in the books, I definitely felt like it was a while before we really truly got a naive perspective. Um, and so again not to throw her under the bus, not to, because again, we do end up loving Nynaeve a hundred percent. I'm not trying to diminish her in any way, but she is really hard to deal with in book one. She's really, she is stubborn to a fault when seen through other people's eyes. She is, you know, a very hard to like character when you see her through the lens of a number of the different characters. And in the show, I felt like I understood her almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Like there wasn't a growing on me period Mm -hmm. for Nynaeve in the show. It was this woman just walked into our tavern (laughs) and is being a huge bitch. (laughs) I am going to knock her down a peg. And I was like, you go girl. Like, let's do (laughs) Well, they gave and her of motivation. She does, yeah. yeah, no, and it did a number of different things as far as, I mean, when she takes out the trolley, like all of these mm-hmm. different things are, are you're seeing it not necessarily through her eyes because again, it's a TV show and you're not seeing it really through anybody's eyes, but you're seeing these, these moments for specific people. Mm-hmm. And I never had that yikes naive calm down a little moment in the show <laughs> it was just all oh shit okay Goss queen oh shit yeah <laughs> very, very much like fucking get it naive like the whole time and so definitely i think that that not that robert jordan did her a disservice because i think he did that intentionally yes um and i think it actually even pays off more in the end in some ways uh, that you love Nynaeve so much later because you come to understand her. But of course, in book one, you don't get a lot of that understanding because you're hearing about her through Rand, through mm-hmm. uh, through Perrin, through Matt, through Moraine, through all of this different stuff, uh, that from the jump, uh, she is definitely more likable and even more badass, which is hard to imagine in the show. Quick question. I- Anybody else like mix a drink and it's stronger than you thought and you take the first sip and you're like, wow, that's strong. And then you take an immediate follow-up confirmation sip. <laughs> yes, the confirmation Every sip is incredibly important. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. You know, so on Especially the when you're of... out at a bar because you have to like actually tell, <laughs> like you're like, they gave me way more shots in this than I thought they were be going be careful to. with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So I love quick quick uh quick sidecar to follow with the alcohol theme <laughs> speech i love i love daniel you're saying uh Nynaeve, get it yeah get it because one of my favorite things about the show was when Nynaeve and lan get together what everybody says <laughs> is yeah Nynaeve, get it i've never once heard someone say yeah lan get it <laughs> not <laughs> one dude and Everybody. it's not even it's not even hard he goes into his room and then he was like i'm instigating this bitch so like, like yeah i want it and then she's even I mean, like you, he does do you too. want it's me totally to leave and he's sexual, like but at the same time naive is the one who's like we're doing this do you want me to leave stoic smolder no. yeah. <laughs> that's it that's the I, I was sitting there being like oh smolder. oh boy <laughs> andrew Andrew, um, what about I know so, I took yours, but have you had? Oh, I, I have to. <laughs> I have to, and it actually works out because I don't have to spend as much time talking about Nine because I definitely agree. But Preeti, you mentioned it. Um, her motivation for hating mm-hmm. the Aes Sedai. Yes! 
In the book, yes. so much better. Yes, so in the much books, better. It's, you it took exists. my apprentice and you took the boys, and it's like, yeah, it's not, <laughs> like you can hate her, but you just hate all Isa Dye. Like, it doesn't make mm-hmm. sense. Uh, but in the show, like where she's like staring down Moraine, even though mm-hmm. she's down in the pool, she yes. is still staring down Moraine and is like, your sisters took one look at her peasant clothes and wanted <laughs> yeah. nothing to do oh, with it and sent so her away. Good. And it's <sighs> like, you, they built history in that one. Oh, they, yeah. Yeah. they yeah. needed. They like, needed. Yes. I mean, Nadine needed that so desperately. It was such did. a good change. She did. It took, again, it took Nadine completely admit, from a section of where we're like, okay, I don't understand why you hate them so much. Like, yeah, they all had to leave, but they had to. And then it's like, okay, now you're mad at her because she has the uh, the bond with Lan, and you want to be with Lan, like. It, it felt very flimsy, and I think it is mm-hmm. a good point where the criticism on how Robert Jordan writes some of the relationships and stuff comes mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. But in the show, it's such a good motivation. It has history. It has motivation, and it makes you, I think, hop in on Nynaeve's side, at least yeah. to some degree, yes. uh, mm-hmm. and I love it. The other one is low gain. You have a reason now to care that yes. he is in a cage. Yes. You have a reason now to be interested in what happens to him in Eye of the mm-hmm. World. And then the scene where he's in front of Suan and the Omerlin <laughs> is being the Omerlin. You're like, oh shit. And then it finally links back to the cold open for episode one and you're yeah. just like, oh, this is terrible. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't yes. think they've quite necessarily fully conveyed the this the parts where it is kind of necessary given the state oh, of the world and how well. it has been <laughs> and maybe they'll do more of that in season two uh because i think a lot of what we see Rand do through the shadow rising maybe later on maybe not i don't know uh because <laughs> i just blinked all that out for now <laughs> um, but definitely they're like kind of the way we see Rand start to go and start to act mm, mm. i think that does a lot to lead credence into why the Red Aja do what they do to male mm. Chandler. Mm. Still don't like it. Well, and, but and we get we you get can you sense. can hate something, but kind of understand yeah. why. Oh yeah, and, and we we start to get the sense that Leandrin in the TV show is playing fast and loose with the rules. Oh yeah, she's and, and I say that she I say that, like that on multiple occasions. <laughs> a lot of well, it, wiggle room because it, it feels like she wears red. Not because of an allegiance to the Red Aja, but to hide the blood splatter from her doing whatever she does. <laughs> yep. And, Out of and- curiosity, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this as a question um, that is, I totally forgot it. I'm the worst. <laughs> oh no! It's because Wait, you don't we were have talking your about Dubby. No, we were talking about Logan. We were talking about. Oh, oh, I remember. Okay, um, this is a totally unrelated question to like the character from book to show in some ways um though it i guess kind of is anyway i'm just gonna ask it do we think that uh lose there in telemon is actually going to be on screen in Rand's head or is he just going to be a voice and if that happens is it just going to be the same actor doing a voice or are they going to get somebody else to do it Somebody with a hair more gravitas. I think I we're going to see. Yeah, I thought you show good. Luce Theron. I, I didn't th- say I didn't. I just said he's <laughs> no think, Morgan he's, Freeman. He's, he's Jesus. Really I, think, <laughs> I think it's going to be similar to the way we see uh, the voices, kind of the, the figures that mold themselves mm. out of the taint uh, talking well, to well, Logan, mixed mm. with the kind of after image that we get of Luce Theron at the Eye of the World. Yeah, I we talked about this too when we were mm-hmm. talking about the finale. I actually thought it was really interesting and potentially significant that Rand sees Luz Theron as a separate person from himself. Like it's not a disembodied, disembodied voice in his head. It's an actual like he can see this person who he like understands to be a past version of himself, but they're separate. Whereas to me, like Logan's, you know. Uh, f- source body, you know, he thinks they're past dragons, but actually they're not. And to me, that was a significant. Yeah, they're actually, I agree. just his disappointed execution. Parents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well. Do you think then that 
because by Shadow Rising, you you already know the effects that channeling Sidene yeah. has on this. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yes. Do you think that maybe they'll start off with visions of loose air and kind of ethereal and wispy like we saw in the season finale? And that as potentially Rant's madness grows, loose air becomes more and more solid? Yeah, maybe. That maybe. would be awesome. Yeah. Rafe, that's a free idea. If you don't already have it, please take it, because that is That great. would actually be a great visual barometer it to would. show, like, the depth of madness that these people How mad are you on a scale of ethereal to fully solid loosening? <laughs> <laughs> fully corporeal. Let's How mad are you on a scale? percentage here. There we go, yeah. <laughs> so... As far is as it as... ethereal black wisps or is it super attractive black man? I don't know. It be like, but it's look. one of the. Is it going to be like a super fact from like the editing team where they tell us how much opacity they put on? <laughs> yeah. Like oh, on this yes. That would be like fifty <laughs> Amazon percent in the season two, and then by season six, he's like ninety eight percent. Like we actually it's had to so... go beyond a hundred percent and like. It's now at two hundred percent. He's more solid than ever before. <laughs> so, so for oh, the last man. sort of thing that I wanted to ask, and I, I know I'm asking all the questions. So, if you guys want me to That's shut fine. up, just tell me. The last sort of thing I want to ask. So, we talked about characters, like who had the biggest change. We talked about characters who was given a little boost, who was given some amplification. Who got nerfed? You know the answer. We all know the answer. It's Perrin. It's Perrin. There we isn't know. another there's, answer. There's I'm no sorry, other answer. Perrin. I was going to say loyal. Oh, loyal. Because to me, Perrin does oh, just, he, I mean, he did get nerfed, but ultimately, well, he like, nerfed. Yeah. From, from the eye of the world, Perrin does just as much in the show as he does in the book. <laughs> just like 0.8% Wait. above nothing. No, but they take away. They take Anything away. Anything times zero is zero. No, I feel like parent, and I am not a parent apologist. Like if you listen to Jen Connor Bus, you know Jen, Jen is the parent apologist in this relationship. I am That's not. I am the one who's too. like, oh my god, please don't give us another parent POV, please. Uh, but. No, I- can we start our own show called <laughs> Everyone Hates Parents? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but in the show, so like in the in the eye of the world, at least we have all the Elias stuff. We have all this stuff going on with him. In the show, we get like brief glimpses of the wolf, and then it's just trauma porn Hungry for like, like the wolf. hours. <laughs> Well, he did say on the blue carpet at the premiere, you know, he said, there's a lot of emotional dialogue and there's a lot of inner dialogue. So it basically translates into me doing this a lot. Uh, <laughs> like, he said wrong. that I mean, at you the can't, premiere. You can't do that on screen, though. It is a huge difference between doing that in a book when you can yes. hear the inner dialogue yeah. and get the POV. Yes. Like, you can't, Super you can't do it. You can't do you it mean, in a show. You mean parent just laying face down on the bed sleeping wasn't emotionally <laughs> riveting for you? <laughs> I was like, I feel that uh, on my bones. I too wish to lay on the bed and pretend like <laughs> everything else isn't happening. And then, like, the choices were confused. I can't. No, they it's didn't so, work. It's, it's, there's it so many work. things wrong with it. There's so like, many loyal, I it. agree with you. Like, I want, I always want more. I'm a loyal apologist, not that you <laughs> need an apologist. No are apology you, are you, needed. No are you apology. a loyalist? I'm a loyalist. I'm a loyalist. He looks I'm like he's got, loyalist. like, he looks like he's got Will Ferrell syndrome, like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Oh my yes. No. Like, I like, like no, it. Only, I like that's more it. of like that's more of a thing. Like on, I, I'm, be I'm not a big fan of his practical effects. Yeah. I'm not a big fan so, of his practical effects. There, I think there are portions of it. I think it's on the right track. Um, yeah. But sure. like, like his hands for me, noticeably, like each finger. Like I know they say they're as big as sausages, but it just seemed like a literal t- like a little bit too literal on the description of his hands like it looked like his hands <laughs> had been stung by like bees each. and he it, and i only really criticize it that much because it looks like he can't move his hands mm. like yeah. it looks like he can't like it flex does. his fingers gotcha. so that's a concern i have i mean i still love <laughs> how will he pick like, up his uh, books but... and turn the pages okay if he can't yeah. move his fingers yeah no and i no i i can see that entirely 
I, I think I love I think how that's... we don't even have any disagreement. There's just two <laughs> characters who are well, the obvious answers for I d- this. I do think, though. Uh-oh. Oh, sorry, Uh-oh. I'm interrupting somebody. No, 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 go, go ahead. Go ahead. But I mean, Preeti and I, we talked about this, the way they're setting up Matt for I am season upset. two. I am it's upset. very weird. <laughs> <laughs> like like this is, dark like, nonsense. It's yeah, dark, dark Matt, Matt is my favorite character. He is my disaster child. Yes. I love him so much. Yes. And this garbage about like one of you has to go dark is nonsense. He would never. He would he never. Make some, mm. He'll say it. He'll make some choices. Yeah. And I'm but not it, saying he gave, always makes good choices. But it gave <laughs> Moraine her Yoda <laughs> moment. There was a darkness. I think in I me. I know, but I think that was a I think that was a behind the scenes filming oh. issue. Matt, Matt is currently on the Sasuke. Matt is currently on the Sasuke. No! <laughs> he is I'm not, not saying I agree just with it. Because you don't like it, Preeti, doesn't mean it's not true. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean. I, Other than his siblings, you, ha- I think Matt would not miss like the rest of his family. Untrue. Well, untrue. the rest of his family, maybe uh, family, mm-hmm. but okay. like that conversation with Perrin that he has about the knife and like, he's so there for, for his actually, friends. So, is there for his fair, friends? I will say there talking is about his mom and dad. third Fair. one. I was going to say there's a third person who should be in the running for nerfed. And that is Abel Coffin because he's <laughs> dope. That's fair. And that's he's fair. an asshole. That's, that was, that's oh. fair. He's so, also <laughs> that in this much of the show, but yeah. he's an asshole. So, fun fact. That's a fair. Fair. That fair. is one of my two characters that I thought is was it? nerfed. The other one we have not mentioned yet. Oh. Ooh. Oh shit. Almond so I'll Bunt? start. I'll start with Abel. Yeah. Yeah. Almond Bunt. No, he didn't. He got the exact. Send Bowie. Of, I mean, yeah, he, did, he got the exact. Send Bowie. Send Bowie got nerfed as well. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, no, so Abel Cawthon, like, okay, when they came out and said, oh, yeah, Abel and they're going to be shifty and they're going to be shady and they're going to be sort of the dregs of society, I was not happy with it. But at the same time, I can see it. Because mm-hmm. well, when Tamel goes... Thor actually turns Abel into a good person, it's going to be a nice payoff. <laughs> but... Okay, sure, sure. But but they talk Top about ten Abel anime being... redemption arc. <laughs> there you go. And that's what we're Abel hoping for. Abel is Sasuke, right? actually. <laughs> yeah, Abel is Sasuke. There you go. Abel Wait, who's Sasuke's Tam Boruto. Yeah, <laughs> we don't talk about Boruto here. Yeah, not yet. Uh, but but Matt about. is Matt is Sasuke's but kid. In in the books, you get. You know, Abel Cawthon is on. the quarterstaff champion of the two mm-hmm. rivers. Yep. Abel Cawthon is the best horse he's trader the, in he's the, the two the rivers. He's the of the two rivers. <laughs> and in the TV show, it's Abel Cawthon's a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Yep. And like, end of story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Abel hey, Cawthon- we don't see him with a quarterstaff. He may still be dope, even though he's a piece <laughs> of but shit. But they didn't talk Maybe about it Maybe it was just it an in innuendo. The show. Oh. Right. Hey. <laughs> No. There it is. TV show tie-in right there. There you go. There, there is your scarring mental image for the recording. <laughs> he trades a lot of horses with his quarterstaff. Oh, oh no, 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 no. no. <laughs> and then Daniel just took it too far. You went too far. I know. I Sarah bleach. Jessica Parker wasn't in the show. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm. I'm so oh. sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna shut before, up. The whole before rest Daniel of the kills that was my entirely. that was my end. And I can already hear people being upset yes. with this one. <laughs> but I am so upset with the portrayal of Luz Theron. Huh. Huh. I am. I. I feel like. And here, here's, I feel like in the books, we got more Luz Theron, especially at the end of the Eye of the World when they're talking about Luz Theron and blah, 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 blah. I feel like we had more understanding of this madman and how tragic his story was in the book than in the 30 second argument that was not an argument that made very little sense to me 
in the TV are you, show. Are you advocating for Winter Dragon now? Because I will end you. Oh, I am no. not. I am not. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> that far. Luz Theron scene is kind of like uh, the before what yeah, he does. No, yeah. I get it. I get yeah. it. And then, I mean, like, the prologue in the book is like the after. So, for like a story, I, like, kind of expanding I a little bit it. on it, I like the story part of it. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it was, was kind like, of lackluster. I think I get it, but I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was I get Theron, it. He didn't. I had, the, the I had different problems with not, the scene, though. The conversation was not riveting. He didn't present as any you. sort of anything to her. He was just like, I, I loved think, that I, shit. I think I can do this. And she's like, you can't. End of conversation. You're basic. But that's the and then they make a the comment. Show. And then he makes the comment, oh, the fate of the world was decided in a nursery. And it was like, <laughs> no, it was. It was decided by you, dick. Like, oh, I but just But I think that's, he, the, he, that's the show up updating its lore is how i felt like mm. the show is like we're hey, gonna I'll... do something can different. we andrew can we replace josh with <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's that's not under my control um, <laughs> no but i mean you like, can't he have does... her i need her i need her <laughs> you can have josh who else will focus on uh, one want, sentence yeah. for he an hour and a half much, no one <laughs> no, no, no. we're, we're just gonna unilaterally add something else to preeti's plate of things to do yeah <laughs> No, oh, but I mean, so, so he does make Spider-Man books to write. She has Spider-Man yeah. books to write. My my editor right now is like, no, don't do this. <laughs> anyway, but no, I mean, I think I see your point, Josh. But I, yeah, I don't know if I can get on board. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's well, he does make the comment um to is it Latra? Am I remembering that right? Tamra? Tam no, what was her name? Oh. They called her the Tamara, but wasn't it Latra the Latra, 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 yes. the Tamara. Latra, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. he does make the Latra. comment to Latra when she's like, you can't do this alone. And he's like, then I'm not join us and help us. Yes, yes. <laughs> and she's me. like, no, we're not exposing the one power yeah. to the dark <laughs> one. Which is a fair logical argument. You? I don't know, Jen and I disagreed. Jen and yeah. I were like, Oh, maybe you should have gone because maybe right. they would have succeeded. Right. Like it felt very I, I didn't like that conversation for different reasons. I didn't yeah. like how gender essentialist again they made it. Yeah. I didn't like how she was just like, yeah, it I mean, it just felt very she's like, it'll be because men have ruined everything. And like I just I don't know. It felt I mean, very they usually do. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm just our saying world history, you're not wrong, but that <laughs> we had this opportunity to update that shit in Agreed. the show and they didn't take it in a way that felt really blatant and was a bummer to me. Um, but I liked I liked Lucerne and I actually appreciated because I, I kind of I'm not going to lie. I hate Lucerne in the books. I hate him. <laughs> I hate him. He's such a whiner. And like, I get it. His story is tragic, but. But oh my god, like I can't get even. it. Your wife's dead. I <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Oh, like, Say Eliana. I heard it. Who's there and just start like a club or something? <laughs> oh my god. Because like on the on the same vein of like the kind of gender, like gender type <laughs> stuff that, that irks me. Like awesome. I it was what? <laughs> I said, you guys are awesome. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. I just said, because it's awesome. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, you guys are awesome. yeah, the gender no, I, We love I hated, genderness. I hated oh the tropey nature of like all of Lou Theron's like motives for wanting to strike at the dark one being reduced to the I'm going to save my baby kind of thing. Like, <laughs> it's a good parent thing, but it's such a trope for like why, why men in fantasy and a lot of TV shows like want to go out and be willing to take on these suicide missions you know it's like oh it's, yeah it's for my well, family it's still a noble cause but i'm like mm. we could have we could have dealt without the tropiness no it, I, I think it would have fit pre strike at Sha at shao goal um type lose theron to be like this is for the fate of the world this is what yeah. my job is rather than you, i think that's part of what i hate about the conversation though because in the tv show there is no threat it's just I figured out how to do this and I'm going to go do it. They're at the height of, of civilization and prosperity. And, you know, we are to understand that, that technologically everything is wonderful and 
and economically I, everything is wonderful and i there's can't no count for that without spoiling reason <laughs> yeah no to spoil it i cannot i'm, I'm saying from the spoiling. perspective yeah yeah the yeah, show, yeah yeah i'm that saying moment, in the tv right? show his motivation is i can end evil and it's like you guys are already living that's in fair the the peak of humanity i don't know what no, I was just going to say, not. ending evil is a pretty awesome motivation. It is, as far as also, I mean, okay. Right, but if, <laughs> it, ain't, hear if, you. if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Like, <laughs> right, if right, though right. in the next season we get, because right. we got, that scene was like three minutes long or something, yeah, right? Yeah. It's like the one glimpse we've seen of it. If in season two we go more in depth and it's like, oh, actually the dark one was escaped. I hope so. Right? I hope there, so. Right. There's I hope more we get reasoning. More. I, I, without getting into spoiler, I'm going to be very broad about this. I think certain things we learn about later that explain kind of the events that possibly may have led up to this decision Mm. have already happened. And that's why he's like, we need to do this. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to see, because one of... And if that's the case, cool. Like and if, if you we are get that whole spoiler, aisle thing, right? And you want right, to go right. and like watch our episode on our background <laughs> breakdown of the Forsaken of Landfear, uh, please do because it answers <laughs> any and all questions that you might have. About our- okay, Andrew, I have a question for you though. I have a question for you about mm. the baby thing. Uh-huh, do baby. you think that it's possible that the reason they had the baby in there was to parallel Rand's temptation with the baby with a green because that's what i saw yeah was like you mean and Egwene's I... accepted test no no, no, no. In, in, the, the show, in the show in the show the no. final no, the, fina- I, the finale we, battle oh, yeah. oh, okay uh, i'll get you in yeah, and I will, accepted test yeah <laughs> i will openly admit here for posterity that my argument about the the kind of frustration with the the trope is a very weak argument against the frustration with the trope because there's there's plenty Listen, of other ways other ways to view it but yeah i mean i think it is I, there's like, all kinds of tropes i hate so i'm with you yeah. well we see a lot of things that are, are called oh, they're not I, really I, dead yet oh wait i i 100 believe that that rafe because we already know that rafe said he had to fight and persuade to keep the story of manetherin in the show Mm-hmm. And I fully believe that that was at least 25 to 40 percent of why the finale goes the way it does with Amalisa, Ooh. because it's a callback to the story of Manethrin. Mm-hmm. Um, it ties that in together. So it makes a good argument that, you know, in uh, in the season finale that Lou's there and, and uh, presumably or not presumably, but his child is a likening on to Rand's visions uh, right. in the whatever you want to call it dream show but you can still whatever. hate the trope that's fine that's mm-hmm. fine yeah oh yeah <laughs> yep we can hate yeah. whatever we want to hate that's right yeah you can. That's straight oh. it's, it's one of the things like i, I, I felt I he had coconut. better it's terrible <laughs> and i don't have a good <laughs> reason for that but fuck coconut so there you go i felt like given who loose theron is in the books and his roles in the book or what we learned about him that he had far better motivation than yeah yeah. Just the tropey, like I'm, I'm gonna go risk life and limb to save my family. It's honorable. Right. Don't get That's me wrong. Legit. That's legit. But I do still think we're gonna get. I think we're gonna get some of that IL background stuff, like which is my favorite part of Shadow Rising, yeah. which is like yeah. the the is it Shadow Rising? It's Shadow Rising those... general because I don't right? remember where Fantastic. Shadow Rising ends. Right, right it's now. a Shadow of like going through the it's generational history. The Crystal history, Columns, right? Yeah, yeah, and Ruidian, and Ruidian. Is Ruidian. One of Which, the reasons like, that it's my favorite. Oh, book. so it's good, so good. Oh, so you already but know really like think... what the event I was talking about is. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. But that's we okay. get like that. I think Jen and I spent like. That episode is like two hours. <laughs> two hours long. It's two like two hours, hours long. Over easily, like we, easily. we had a couple of those. But like, yeah. it's, but have you done I, five <laughs> episodes on a certain character? Not yet. And I can't. Wait I can't even fully. I, I can't Wait finish the joke. How baths have you gone over in the Wheel of Time series? <laughs> <laughs> we, we tried to mostly when nudity comes up it's us being like god robert jordan you're so weird <laughs> you know yep. i will say like nudity in the tv show was done so yes. well taste yeah Lance Great. Bonds crosses it was 100 <laughs> and, and i'm going yeah i'll say it straight up like i i i am a male 
I love the female form. It is attractive to me. I like to see it naked sometimes. I, that's just who I am. But it is so annoying to watch a TV show or a movie or a blah, 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 blah. And you've got a love interest. And like, like Highlander is really bad about this. And don't get me wrong. I love Highlander. It's one of my favorite like, was genres ever. But in every single Highlander movie, a chick gets naked and for no reason. For no reason. And for the Highlander no is like fully dressed. And he's like, ah, yes, I'm going to make love to you. And it's like, okay, but both of them should be naked. <laughs> they Welcome does, to the you patriarchy. don't know yeah, how it know. works. Welcome to the oh. patriarchy. So hey, when... hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Hey, okay, and I that's mean, what we're breaking out of with yes, Wheel of totally. Time, yes. because Marcus, we got Marcus tried. nice water buns. Mm-hmm. When we got Lana, extremely Lannis, like, nice water buns. I will Marcus say though, Lannis I did not. I hated that courtyard. scene. I was just gonna say, for the I hated, hated that, that scene. So I really love Daniel Henny. I have been like a Daniel Henny fan since. Oh yes, like my sassy girl, like long time. Yes, <laughs> but thank you. That bath scene was so, so uncomfortable to me because I was like, I don't understand the point of this. I don't understand why this couldn't happen in a sitting room. I don't understand. <laughs> As if Lan would um, ever be like, oh, could it be hotter? The water's too cold. <laughs> like Lan, never, it's, never, whoa, whoa, whoa. never. He didn't say it's too cold. He said it could be warmer. There's yeah, sorry, never. The water could be warmer. <laughs> Okay, Never. sir. I, and, and so my Mm-mm. my thing with that, I thought it was kind of funny because he was kind of being flirty with it as well. He was like, you know, we've been on the road a lot and I'm here because of you. So maybe. <laughs> I did not care for it. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't understand nice. what's happening. <laughs> I, as a straight white male, I loved Daniel Henry on screen, and I'm not taking that back for a second. You like, get out of my no, face. We right? can't Daniel Witcher, Aaron. I'll tell you that. Oh my god. I mean, then you have that discussion: is oh, is it fair awesome. to com- is it fair to compare like Daniel Henry and uh, it's not what, Henry Cavill? No, I'm comparing the bath scenes. Period. Oh, okay. Fair yeah, enough. I haven't yeah, watched so, the Witcher. The, the, so the Witcher can't. bath scenes are way better. Yes, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> Unpopular opinion, possibly. Listen, no, I popular I, with me. <laughs> I agree. Though. That's the only person you need to impress, Jen. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. No, I do. I did really. I mean, we talked about this too. How they did fade to black for the sex scenes. Like, yeah. I thought that was a really smart choice. Agreed. Because they are like they're signaling to everybody this is not Game of Thrones. Like, we're mm-hmm. not doing the full on sexuality of whatever. But they're also playing with sexuality in that, like, we have queer people on screen and we have different Mm -hmm. arrangements of relationships and we have platonic relationships and we have sexual relationships we have you know all these different ways if i wanted a man i could do better than exactly i loved it exactly that was amazing that was amazing so like (laughs) i agree with you they like that is one of the areas where Mm -hmm. i think the show updated the books really successfully agreed (laughs) agreed I, I I I love that. I love I love this. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Like this was this was fantastic. I we was. just got a comment about how we should have dissenting opinions more often. So <laughs> I am so and this was not planned in advance. Like, well, it was planned in advance, but not for that purpose. So we didn't we didn't ask you. you these questions prior just to get your answers so that we know. It, it's our yeah. screening process. You have to disagree with us on at least five things. Shut up. Okay, and so, the, um and to clarify for anybody that doesn't know, we often have dissenting opinions amongst <laughs> ourselves <laughs> and with guests. It happens. You just have to, you know, watch more than one or two things. <laughs> Do you like movies or perhaps television shows? Are you one of those uncommon souls who enjoys the most popular film franchises of all time? Then join us on the Ack Attack with J&Z, where every week our hosts discuss the media they enjoy. Whether it's the newest comic book movie, Star Wars show, or fantasy series, or just simply whatever book, movie, comic, or TV show that we've consumed this week, you can find the Ack Attack with J&Z wherever you find your podcast and fall under attack today. So so thanks for being here. Um, Jen and Preeti, uh, tell the people again where you can be found 
and why they must absolutely consume all of your content. Uh, Josh, I'm sorry. They've just spent an hour and 15 minutes convincing people that they should consume all of their content. Now just tell Touché. them where they do that. Touche. Preeti, you go first this time. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can obviously find me on Tarvel and her bust. Or you can buy my books, which I would much appreciate. If you go to my website, preetychipper.com, I have a Spider-Man novel coming out this summer whoop, whoop. called Spider-Man Social Dilemma. It comes out in July and it is available for pre-order. Um, and you can find me on Twitter mostly at Run with Skizzers, S-K-I-Z-Z-E-R-S. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> July what? Comes out, on, do you have a, a specific uh, date? July 23rd. 20... Second, something, oh. twenty something. If you could do the, if you could do the twenty I can't tell. Could, no. I don't know. If you could do the fifteenth, that would be great. Not because it's my birthday or anything. But... Oh, <laughs> is it a Tuesday? You have to bring up your deadline by one week. For <laughs> there you go. Deal with I don't know how that works for your metrics, but you're you're the second, the second uh, published author author that I have requested alter their publication date to my birthday so so she's in good company is what you're saying that's right yes you are in very good company the the other one was uh was jason denzel so yes indeed so you're also very good good company company. (laughs) jen um yes i'm not as fancy as preeti uh but you can (laughs) you can find me on (laughs) I haven't written as many. I haven't written any books. I've co-edited books, but I have not written. Swordstone Table. Oh, sure. Okay, so yes, yes. So okay, so I am the co-editor <laughs> of Swordstone Table, which is an anthology of Arthuriana retellings. Which, if you're a King Arthur fan, nice. I think you will Love really you guys enjoy. Each other up. And Preeti has is a story that, in it, which is I'm amazing. <laughs> is that Archer Paindrag Hawkwing? Oh wait, sorry. <laughs> Listen, we are gonna get to the point where I do an entire side episode just on the. We're Arthur do it. in in yes. real time versus yes. like Arthur yes. in Love our it. world. It's gonna happen. Love it's it. gonna Excellent. happen. Um, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And I'm actually I'm running an open call right now for the next anthology I'm working on with uh, my good friend Sharifa Williams, which is gonna be Greek mythology retellings particularly from the margins. So if you're out there and you're like wishing that you saw more of yourself in Greek mythology, you can find that open call. Uh, it's a pinned tweet on my Twitter, which is Jen IRL, J-E-N-N-I-R-L. Or you can find me on Tumblr, also Jen IRL, or on Instagram, I am Jen IRL. Excellent. Go <laughs> Greek mythology is my things. second favorite mythology yeah. of all time. So. What's your first? What's your first? Norse. Oh, well, there you go. Fair. And they're very similar. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, not actually, but like, (laughs) let's be honest. (laughs) They've got some similarities going. They really do. Rowdy, rowdy, drunken, super powered beings like getting into hijinks. That's that's the vibe. And and the head of the Pantheon usually causes every and all problems that the Pantheon has to deal with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. If you're just trying to click on links, look either in the show notes, if you're listening to this through a podcasting app or look in the description on YouTube, I will put as many links as I can in the description below. Uh, So Preeti and Jen, please send me any and all links you want included. I'm more than happy to include them. Um, But before we fully say goodbye, as is tradition, uh, we have to ask... (laughs) We have to ask for final thoughts. Indeed. So we're, let's start with Preeti. Final thoughts on the topic that we have discussed on oh, characters like, from the book versus the show. <laughs> Just final, was, in like, general. final thoughts on any? No. Um, yeah. I thought they did a great job across the board. Uh, like, not, what did I say on the show? I'm at like a 90, 90 10. Yeah. I, right? yeah. Like, I enjoyed 90% of the show. I had 10% that I wish I could have changed or updated or whatever it was. So yeah, overall, good job. It was like a, it was like an A minus slash B plus. <laughs> nice. uh, my final Terrible thing is, for Asian parents. <laughs> we didn't get to talk about <laughs> Min, who oh, all didn't. I want to say about Min is that I love her in the books and I love her on the show. Yes. That is my final thought. Min forever. Quality. Uh you and Andrew are gonna get along very, very well. <laughs> Josh, final thoughts. Final thoughts are as follows. I love the books. I love the shows. 
they are different. It, 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 we, I mean, to, to bring it back to a concept that everybody is more familiar with now, it's multiverse. Yeah. They are two different universes, guys. Mm -hmm. And so naturally there will be changes. Um, it's not Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield now. It's, Aww. you know, you got a <laughs> lot of different variations. So, uh, yeah, the feels there. Also, honorable mention goes to Noah because <laughs> she was nerfed as well. The best show. horse, the best <laughs> justice for Pips. It. And I'm and oh well, yeah, I bet Pips. Too. <laughs> so yeah, so that's my final thought. Hey, as long as they have Jadine in, in there, that's all I really care about. <laughs> and we haven't gotten there yet. You guys have, but the yeah. show hasn't. That's right. <laughs> Uh, cool. My final thoughts are also very, very much uh, the same with Preeti. Uh, I think that they did a very, very good job of capturing the core of the vast majority of the characters, not portraying them the same way, but that the the deep down their hearts, their themes, their things were all there. Um, maybe not for every single person, but for the vast majority of characters and that I was th definitely there for it. Um, there are a couple where I also could not agree more that I'm a little disappointed and would have done differently, but I overall am very happy with the <laughs> fact that they, I, I felt like they actually understood the characters and communicated them pretty well. Yes. Andrew? Andrew? Uh, I mean, I would agree on the on the character front. It's it seems fair, very obvious that Brave and the entire team understand who the characters are. They also, as we've talked about before, were faced with a nigh impossible task of adapting, you know, ultimately 4.4 million words into, <laughs> as we currently predict, uh, yes. eight seasons of eight mm -hmm. episodes, uh, which again. Bezos, give them at least 10 episodes a season. <laughs> yeah. 12. Come on. And or 10 40. seasons. Fuck, let's do this. No, okay. Yeah, Josh, one or the yeah, other. That last ask was too much, but <laughs> I'm I'm negotiating. You start <laughs> okay. It's a, yeah, it's a chapter well, per yeah. episode. That's, there what we go. that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> well, yeah. There's well, enough see, the, content. The, per the perception of just adding two episodes a season versus adding two full seasons just innately yes. sounds more doable. Oh, correct. Um, even though it's the same amount of screen time that they would theoretically be going with. <laughs> Don't say anything. But, you won't notice he's in his dick no. rocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I really liked uh, all the characters. Um, I thought they were very true to who they are, who they are in the books. Um, a lot of the characters gave me the same feeling and reactions uh, in the show as they did in the books. Um, I'll wait for the potentiality of Egwene in the show redeeming herself because I was not a fan of Egwene early books and I am not a fan of Egwene even though she does some badass uh, stuff in the show <laughs> I like her more in the show than I did in the books yeah um but you know it, it is what it is uh Jen I completely agree on men as Daniel said earlier <laughs> um, and for me the only thing that outshines men is Avienda so I can't wait to see Avienda on the screen. Sorry. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, lost, lost in fantasy land. But I, <laughs> I really like it. I would say, like for the entire show, um, I I love seven of the eight episodes, and I don't hate one of the episodes. <laughs> so, um, one of yeah. these things is not like the others. One yeah. of these things just doesn't belong. Yeah. But no, it's it was it was very good. Um it's been fa fantastic having both of you here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so for much. It. This was really oh. fun. Yeah, this Thank was you. super fun. We Thank are you. Super happy to have you guys here. Yeah. Glad you enjoyed it. Hopefully only regret it a little bit. Um, <laughs> It's like my number one answer anytime somebody's like, oh, yeah, I've listened to your show. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's automatic. That, I'm that's sorry. how I feel when people follow me on Twitter. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> why? No. So thank uh, you guys for being here. Thank why? you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Um, Andrew, did I just cut you off? I didn't mean to if I did. I mean, no, I was going pretty much down the same vein. Like, oh, it's okay. been fantastic. I can't say thank you enough for agreeing yeah, to do this. You, you guys are awesome. And one of our favorite things, there, there, there's two things we absolutely love. 
about doing this show. And one of them is geeking out over the wheel of time every week and getting to meet new and awesome people like you. So honestly, and that's not just lip service, that's sincere. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. You're so um, welcome. <laughs> Thank you to all our listeners out there. Seriously, go follow Tarvalon or Bust. Um, they're super awesome people. And uh, you guys are super awesome people for listening here. Thank you for lining up to receive your weekly dose of taint. And we hope that wherever you are, you're just a little bit more insane than you were when we first started. And from all of us here at the Black Tower, I have been Josh. Is that like a, a super saiyan like pose? <laughs> no, he was actually uh, joining a, he was actually leaving a link. Because it's right. this to get into uh, it, and it's this to get out. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Por que no los dos? Um, okay, no los dos? I have been your Bajan Mahal, Andrew. <laughs> and I have been your Amin Khan Mahal, Daniel. And again, from all of us here at the Black Tower Podcast, thank you very much, Tarvalon or Bust. Thank you very much for everyone who tuned in to listen to us, both live and not live. <laughs> and honestly... We hope that wherever and whenever you are listening to this, you are having an awesome morning. And in case we don't see you again, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Always running the show. Trouble just fitting in.